this movie, Rosemary's Baby. You know, I remember that movie. <laughs> Don't raise your hand, cause then you'll date yourself. <laughs> you age yourself. I think you don't want to do that. <laughs> they might have a remake of Rosemary's mm -hmm. Baby. But anyway, in Rosemary's Baby, the devil impregnate this woman, and these devil worshippers, including her husband, is the one who got had done to her. And she began to suspect something, but at the end, when the baby was born. After she comes out of her, she was knocked out. She came, came to, and she heard some chants in the live in the room, and she went in there. And all these devil worshippers was around celebrating the devil's baby being born. That's Rosemary's baby. Her name was Rosemary. And instead of her taking said, "I brought you in here," like you heard her some old, old women, uh, old women in our city. I brought you in here, boy, and I'll take you out. <laughs> instead of her doing that, she picks up the baby. And she nurses the baby. Now this was years ago. So they're saying in this in this cultural expression, this this movie, that we're gonna give them something from the devil, and because it's given from the culture, they're gonna accept it as their own baby, and they're gonna they're gonna nurse it. And now, where are we now in the world? In, in, in the world, mm -hmm. we got a president that's the embarrassment of every decent American I know. Yeah. And we can't do a darn thing about it. And they're saying, uh, yeah, well, two years from now, go to the polls and vote. That's what we did two years ago. <laughs> and that suck is president. <laughs> that don't give us very much hope, does it? <laughs> but we should have hope because we have, we have faith in God. And we have to know that he wouldn't be there unless God permitted. We should ask ourselves, why did, was it permitted for Trump to be president? You know, I play cards, you know. Well, I used to. And the trump card, you know, that's the card. That, that, that's what you want to have, the trump card. <laughs> Trump's everything. I mean, you got the trump card. But you know what? In, 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 uh, in many of those card games, the trump card's a joker. It's just commentary. <laughs> the joker the trump card. So is that what we have or not? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to, I'm really trying to keep my comments as brief as I can, uh, but I want to read this to you. Uh, Imam goes on to say that the ones who brought communism, Engels and Marx and all of them, those ideas weren't there. They got them from Scripture, and they made it their own, and they didn't give God credit for it. And the problem was they only focused on one aspect of human life, and they made that the, what the destiny should be. So in a sense, they took away from the human being the destiny that God intended for them, and they inserted their own destiny. And when we come into the world shaped by this culture, uh, come in the world perfect human beings, everything right, then the world begins to feed. When I say world, I mean, in this sense, culture. The culture begins to feed their minds, educate them, and they become something that they weren't created to become. And this is why we see all of these um, caricatures of human beings. They're not real. It's not real. That's not human. You mean Muhammad? Look, we can't go out in the public and say this. But how many human beings you see when you go out there walking around? If you know what a human being is, how many you see? You see something that could have became human, huh? But they're not. What they have manifested is not human. That's why a human being got a hard time functioning in this culture. Now, it's, in the scripture, it's called the garden, and in the midst of it, it's good and evil is mixed up. Imam Muhammad says, that's this culture that we're in. He said, Pope John Paul calls this culture the culture of death, D-E-A-T-H. Why? Because they weren't supposed to eat of the tree in the midst of the garden. They weren't supposed to eat of the tree that had good and evil mixed together. But uh, they were enticed into doing it. This is why I did that book right away, uh, The Women Who Called to the Issue. What was on my mind was to have Imam Muhammad's commentary on the how women have been used to promulgate untrue ideas and it accrues to the, to the physical woman and never was talking about a physical woman. I read a, a, an article 
by a Catholic woman many years ago in the Village Voice newspaper out of New York. And she said, how does any woman have a chance in this world when the idea is already present when she is born that women cause the very sin? And Imam Muhammad said once, when he wasn't the leader, he was on a radio show, and a woman asked him to, to talk, and she said, well, what are you working on now? He said, well, I, I, I hope to do a book, and the book is going to be on, um, how did he say, brother? The burden of mythology on society. The burden of mythology on society. How the misreading of scripture burdens the society, that the society is it's opera operating on the mythological concepts, and they don't even understand what it means. Now, if you don't believe what the Imam say, turn on your television. Go to the movie. What's a zombie? But mythology. What's Superman? But mythology. What's Batman? But mythology. And you know, the average person has no idea what it means. It's just entertainment. Now, you know, I read somewhere it said that when the... Um, the Greeks were forming um, the entertainment venue. They had what is called, we call it now, the cheap seats. So at first, theater, you know, theater, the word, the root of the word theater is theo, God. See? So at first, the people who, who were, I guess, were promulgating to the common people what the idea of God should be. So they didn't let common people in. But I guess they got some protests against that. They decided to let the common people in. So they made the cheap sheets for the common people. Now, now the original Greek plays, nobody said anything. There was no voices. Nobody spoke. And all the, all the actors were male for even the female parts. So the one who sat in the theater had to understand that, well, this person is an actor in a role. What is he saying? Right? But when they, when they opened it up to everybody, they just made it sort of as entertainment. And so the people who came, and there were thousands of them, they were just there for entertainment. Now don't you know that's how the world is right now? People don't go to movies knowing that the, the, the one who produced the movie is saying something beyond what you see on the screen. I, went, I saw a movie once called, I don't know if you saw it, Blindness. That was the name of the movie. Blindness. And it had, um, was it Morgan Freeman in it? He, he was, he was, the movie was about a, a disease that started and it was passed by people touching each other. And when they took, and it was in Chicago. And when people would touch each other, they would go blind. So it started with one person being blind and it got passed around like that. And so they, they caught on all these people had gone blind into this place and they fed them and everything. And the whole movie was about how they interacted with each other. But there's one woman in there and she was not blind. But her husband and everybody else was blind. So she spent all her time trying to sh convince them she wasn't blind. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't, she didn't have the disease. Now it's said in Chicago. Hmm? Now, for those who, who got some insight, I think you're going to figure this out. See, nobody in the movie had a name. They didn't have names. The movie was very peculiar. Nobody in the movie had names. So I'm looking at it, and I said, well, if they don't have names in the movie, let me look at the names of the actors, the real names. And you know her na what her name was, the one that wasn't blind in Chicago? Her name is... Her last name is Moore. M O O R E. Moore. Moore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Julianne. Julianne Moore. Yeah. Yeah. But you know that word Moore came from the Moors. Right. Really, they call them Black Moors right. because they were from Morocco right. and all of that. The Black Moors. They shortened to say Moore. So that was her name. So now what is the writer of the movie saying to me? He's saying, there's somebody in Chicago that ain't blind. <laughs> and they're Muslim. And they black. <laughs> See how they do? See how they do in movies? 
They talk over people's head. So Imam says, says uh, you know, we were talking about Satan, blue-eyed. And one of the meanings Imam said of, of Satan, we used to say, um, we used to call the white man the devil because he had blue eyes. Blue-eyed, blue-eyed devil. I got I to gotta say this part. Imam Muhammad said when he was in jail, and uh, they were considering his uh, parole. So he went before the parole panel and said, the white guy, Looked at him, so he, he knew his history and everything. White man's devil, everything. Said so he looked right at him, man. Muhammad said, "Now, am I the blue-eyed devil?" The <laughs> <laughs> man said, "No, you're not the devil to me." You know. <laughs> but anyway, he, he, he said that the devil is blue-eyed. He said, "But it's not what you think." He said, "He he said it's blue from the from the concept of blue meaning sad." and alone. He said that the devil is sad and alone because he can't tell anybody what he's doing. So he's alone. So he has to do it through movies and hints and mythology and all that stuff. So he creates, creates a world that's based on mythological concepts nobody understands. But he can't tell them that he's the one promulgating. So he's alone. He's blue. He's sad because he can't tell them. He wants to tell them real bad, but he can't. You can if you figure it out, you 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 want a lucky one. I I I I think I made it to it. He so let me read what Imam Muhammad said. He said, "We are the world of psychology started by one psychoanalyst, Sigmund Freud, and he was a Jew, and he and." Has it affected the curriculum in the colleges and, and universities? He said, yes. He affected the whole curriculum for public school or for the secular order, the world. His psychology has affected the Western culture. And where did it come from? Where did he get his teaching from? Where did he get his ideas? He got them from Scripture. Marx, where did he get his idea? From Scripture. But instead of giving it like Scripture, scripture gives it, he gives it as though it is independent of God. The same religious teachers are inspired men, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. These men, they didn't just point man to a spiritual realm. They pointed man to the natural world made by God and how God made it to benefit man, to serve man's needs in society. This is what the prophets did. The thieves, they take one focus, one perception or orientation, and they establish it separately from scripture and they say man should be like this, a man should be established upon this. Society should be built upon this ideology. Imam says, interest in the social nature of man and the belief that man should be dealt with fairly, he should have justice, and the belief that the common man is qualified to have his own life is not Marxist discovery. It's not Engel's discovery. These Jews brought communism to the world. This is the revelation. This is the Quran and Bible too, if you understand it. But the Quran doesn't say that this is the whole life. It just says that it is a focus for you, that God has made you a social creature and God has made you utilize the material world for the betterment of your social order. Now, if you take that by itself, you've got Karl Marx, you have Engels, and those other guys. Just take God out of it and take it by itself, that's what you've done. He says, you got to see that these people robbed. They're robbers. They have nothing original. Everything they have, they stole it. He says, the natural man in his innocence and purity, that is all represented in Jesus Christ. It's all represented in the Christ concept and also in Muhammad. And that's why Muhammad the prophet said, one day we will see Christ and Muhammad together. We would understand Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, you may have told us to this, told me this personally. He said that Muhammad the Prophet saw all this stuff that was going on. He saw all the schemes that was working around him. He said, but he didn't have the nature of the spirit to interfere with any of it. And he may have said, and I'm the same way. See, it's those of us who think that we need to go and straighten all of this out. You know, go out there and all these crazy behind people uh, will 
overshadow, overshadow and kill us. And then we die to sacrifice like Jesus Christ died. You know, we got some among us that think that. We didn't start this problem. Right? All we really need is to, you know, your Honorable Elijah Muhammad said this. He said, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, if there's a room full of snakes, some, some poisonous and some not poisonous, he said, now you'd be stupid to go in there and you can't tell the difference between a poisonous snake and a non-poisonous snake. <laughs> need to learn the difference between a poison. So, so, what, so, so our teaching teaches us to understand what's good and what's not. So Imam Muhammad said, what you need to do, and I know this is hard, you need to reject that mind you have. You need to reject... I know what I'm saying. You need to reject that mind you have. Why? It's not your mind. Did you have that mind when you were born? You were just saying that, right, man? Did you have that mind when you were born? No, you, I answered for you. You didn't have it. So, then how, so you're going to be just like Rosemary's baby. You're going to defend this mind that the Satan, of, coming from the world that the Satan created. You're going to defend that. Now, but in your prayer, in our prayer, we take this mind and we put it on the ground. And it's a it's a it's symbolically representing sacrifice in our own thinking. Uh Imam said, Imam said, it's like making the perfect sajda. And what's the perfect sajda? Taking all that mind that the world gave you and do Harry Carry on it. Get rid of it. He says, and then let your mind be fed by the word of God. Huh? So after we make that first prostration, Imam Muhammad says, representing our attempt to extract from the world what we need, but since we don't have the knowledge, we're just getting what shaitan has out there. Okay? So we, when we come to our country, oh, God, forgive and have mercy on me. And we put, and we, and, no, we say that, we put our head down, and then we, and then we, when we raise up, we say, oh, God, forgive me and have mercy on me. Why are we saying that? We're saying it because the prayer is indicating someone who has discovered that they have been bamboozled. Like, they've been hoodwinked. They've been run amok. They've been cheated. They've been lied to. <laughs> They've been tricked. And giving ourselves to what God has for us through our prophet, we come to understand, wait a minute, I can't trust none of what I have. Mm -hmm. But I say, I say, Allahu Akbar, you know, the brothers, even they doing something wrong. They say, Allah, wait, Bob. They explode a bomb, killed 2,000 people. 99% of them innocent. That's a law, wait, Bob. But well, we got to do the same thing. Hallelujah. In our prayer, we say, Allah, wait, Bob. And we go down in the prostrate and we put this that's been keeping us away from where we should go. We put it on the ground. We kill it. We sacrifice it. And if we understand that when Muhammad the prophet did that, the first one to do it for us, he was saying that whatever he got, he sacrificed. You remember Muhammad said, and when he was in that cave and, and, and learned to do that, there was nothing in the cave but Muhammad the prophet's uswa. Everything else he learned to sacrifice. So, 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 uh, so, so when he man, it was in the ninety-five Ramadan session. So when the man finished, he was sitting down. I, I went on, I said, Brother Imam, I said, I said, I was, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. I said, Brother Imam, how, if Prophet Muhammad did this perfect sajda, and that's why the Quran came to him, I said, then how, we're supposed to be his followers. How, what, what can we do? He said, the, the, the extent to which we can follow the Prophet is the extent to which we can receive the Quran. Don't receive the revelation of the Quran, it's already been received. But how can you say you have pure water in a glass and you already have dirty water in the glass? You gotta empty the dirty water out and you gotta clean that glass up. Because you can put the purest water in the world, you can put holy water in there, but if it's dirty water already there, it ain't gonna be too holy after that. And if we're talking about our understanding, our spirit, our orientation, all of that that we got from the world, 
uh, you can get all the Quran you want. Just like you uh, uh, said yesterday, somebody said it. 